So for chapter 10, we will study something new, uh, something that is uh, very useful in the industry. In fact, this is the most powerful part uh, to learn uh, statistics. So uh, chapter 10, we will study these uh, two concepts here, correlation and regression. So if you remember previously, right, what we did, either we are using z-test or t-test, right, in the hypothesis testing. We are trying to compare as the uh, average equal to some number or the two samples, do they have the same average? Something like that, right? So one thing we talk about a lot here is about what average. So that's what, that's one dimension of study. Like trying to compare is the overall population is the, is the average is equal to that or not, right? So one dimension study, there is no cause and effect study. So it's two dimensional study. We have not done that. So chapter 10, we will handle that. To give you an example of this uh, two dimensional study, so we consider some um, car rental companies here. So we have A, B, C, D, E, F, six companies, and the corresponding how many number of cars they have. So company A, they have a 63 in terms of units, thousand. So 63,000 number of cars. Corresponding revenue, seven billion dollars. Company B, C, and so on, right? So if we have, uh, based on what we have learned so far, what we can do? We can do calculate, for example, the average number of cars out of those six companies, right? Average number of revenue for those six companies, right? We can do the confidence interval. We can do the hypothesis testing, right? So we can do all those. But um, if we want to study anything, like for example, any relationship between the number of cars and number of revenue, like those kind of stuff, we haven't, we haven't done that yet, right? So uh, we can do some visual to see any correlation exist between them, right? So we can, you can see that um, X, Y plane here, right? X is number of cars, right? Y is the corresponding revenue for that company. So for example, um, company A, they have 63 thousands of cars, right? So 63, that's way to the right, right? Corresponding revenue, 7.0 billion, that's way to the top. So you can see there's one dot, like further, further away, right? And then um, there's one company, company F, with the smallest number of cars, 8.5, right? 8.5 thousand cars, corresponding revenue, 1.5 million, billion. So that's the, the, the corner, the um, bottom dot, right? So we plot them here, you can see, those six dots, six companies, more or less, they are lying on the, like some line. Is that right? They are around some straight line here. You can, you can, you can consider that way, is that right? So that give us some hints. There existing some relationship between the number of cars and corresponding revenue for the company. Everybody, intuitively, that's reasonable, is that right? That's making sense, right? If you have more number of cars, ideally, I mean potentially, you will get more revenue, is that right? So intuitively, we can, we can understand that way, right? So now we want to develop some measure, some metric to measure the relationship, how strong the relationship between them. So we are going to have some formula, we call this correlation coefficient. So we are using a letter, small letter R to indicate that correlation coefficient to measure two columns. What's the relationship between them? Everybody? This um, formula here, the formula uh, you are seeing here, this formula, uh, we don't require that because it's too, uh, too complex. Uh, the example here is try to tell you how do we do the calculation. Uh, 
Nowadays, using a computer is way more easy to do that. So we don't require using a com um, the um, calculator to, to calculate that correlation coefficient, low worries for that. However, I do require the understanding what that mean for this correlation coefficient, right? So after you do the calculation, there's a range for this correlation coefficient. Everybody, the range will always be between negative one and one. So in other words, you don't expect it anything like 1.5, negative two, no way. Uh, it's always between negative one and one. So that's the range you are getting. So what does that mean? When you have the R is close to one, like or equal to one, right? That means what? That means those two columns that we say they have strong positive correlation when R is equal to one or close to one, right? Strong positive correlation. When uh, you can understand those two columns, those two, um, Matrix, right? They are going the same direction, right? So if X is going to the left or if X is going up, Y should also going up. That means they are going the same direction. That's the reason, that's the meaning of positively correlation. Now for the negative correlation, R equal to negative one or close to negative one, right? So that means if X is going up, Y is going down. So they are um, on the totally opposite direction. That's what we call uh, a strong negatively uh, correlation. So uh, that's R equal to those two cases. There's one more. Someone say, how about R equal to zero, right? So what's happening R equal to zero means if X is going up, why could it going up, could it going down? Doesn't matter. So in other words, they are kind of independent. So if you want to understand that using some like a direction, if X is going uh, north, right? If X is going north, and when we say positive correlated, then Y should also go north, right? If we say, X, Y, they are negative correlated, means X is going, if X is going north, then Y should also, Y should go south. They are totally opposite direction. Now, if I is equal to zero, that means there's no correlation between them. That means if X is going north, Y would go either west or going east. So that means what? X, Y is like a 90 degree correlation. Is that clear? Uh, hopefully that uh, uh, explain the correlation uh, for those three situations. Everybody, if you understand that, type yes on the message, the chat window, uh, if you understand what I just said. Okay, so those are the uh, important concept. Uh, even though the calculation part here, we don't require that but I do require the understanding part, the concept part, right? So after we do the calculation, we find out the correlation is equal to uh, point line A2. What does that mean? That's 98.2% between those two. And we, we see it's pretty close to one, is that right? So we say that's um, intuitively making sense. Number of cars, the corresponding revenue, they are strongly positively correlated. Right, okay. So that part here, we don't require any calculation. We require the understanding, the concept. Now, the following part here, I do require that. Everybody, uh, if you care about the final, care about this case here. So this piece here is try to do the hypothesis testing to understand the R we got, right, is point line A2 right? Out of how many samples, if you remember, everybody, we got six companies. In other words, six examples here, six samples here, right? So it's not that many. So can we say this point line A2 is really significant different from zero? 
We are not sure. So we want to do statistically testing, hypothesis testing to see this R here. Uh, even though you have six samples, can we still say that's significantly different from zero, right? So we do the hypothesis testing. Everybody, we do five steps hypothesis testing. Number one, write down H0, H1. H0 always equal, right? So in this case here, we want to test it. Is that equal to zero or not? So R is the, uh, the correlation co coefficient, right? Uh, that's the H0, H1. Number two, calculation. Everybody, this new formula, that's a new formula we, are, we will use whenever we test correlation coefficient here. That's a new formula. So it's a relatively simple formula here, right? So we have T is equal to R. That's the R we got from calculation, 0.982, right? Someone says N is six. We have six components, right? Divided by one minus R square. Take the square root. We got 10.4, everybody. That's a new formula. That's a T formula. Right, degree of freedom, everybody. That's a new part here. Previously, we have n minus one, right? And if you have two sample case, uh, you have n one minus one and two minus one. You take the minimum one, right? This part here today is new. The degree of freedom n minus two. Why? So in statistics, um, most most of the time is n minus one, right? There are certain cases. A uh, little bit of difference. N minus two, if you study more, N minus three, right? To help you intuitively, why is that? Why we have to minus one more, everybody? Uh, to help you understand that, because we have used one parameter R here in the formula. So whenever you use the more parameter, you have to penalize that. So when you penalize that, you minus how many number of parameters you have used. Uh, that's the reason we have to minus one more, so we, which is uh, uh, n minus two. That's a degree of freedom. Is that clear? Now, number three, find out the critical value, right? Critical value coming from a table. Which table though, everybody? The table determined by which formula we are using. We are using this T formula. That means we are using T table, right? Using the T table, that means we have to check, um, let me open the t-table here. That's a beautiful one-page t-table, right? So first we have to check, is that at one side or two side, right? H1 here is uh, not equal to zero. That means two tails. Okay, so second row here, which was the um, degree of freedom we are using? Degree of freedom, a minus two, that's four, right? So. Alpha is uh, 5%, right? 5% here, and then degree of freedom, four. So 5% and degree of, degree of freedom, four, 2.776. 2.776 plus or minus, because we have two sides, everybody. So when we draw this pale shaped form, right? We can remember we draw like vertical line here, right? And then compare with our data. Where is the, the calculation? It's coming from a data that tells us 10.4. That's somewhere here. That's further away, like to the right, to the tail. That's not close to the center, everybody. Center is what? HO, remember? Center is HO. Data tells us it's further away from the center. What does that mean? Center is not right. We are going to reject the center. We are going to reject HO. We are going to reject HO, what does that mean? Right, HO is not right. H1 is right. H1 is right means there are the correlation coefficient is not equal to zero. That means what? That means they do exist a correlation between those two columns, even though you only have six samples. Is that clear, everybody? So that's this example here. Um, another part here I want to cover that here is uh, correlation. 
is not equivalent to causation. Uh, so after we study stats, we study this correlation. I don't want you to have this um, impression, right? Correlation is equivalent to causation. That's not right. That's not right, okay? So you can have the causation. So say X cause Y, if X will cause Y, then you say X and Y has a strong correlation. You can say that. But you cannot say if X and Y has a correlation, then we say X will cause Y or Y will cause X. That's not right. We cannot say that. Okay. So um, we will have some video to show you that uh, later uh, why that's the case. Okay. Um, next, uh, Uh, for this coefficient of determination, R square, we will come back in a moment, um, in a few minutes. Okay, so um, the third section here is we want to study this regression, right? Regression is considered as a traditional statistics. Like that's the, uh, when these uh, subjects developed, right, the most intuitive application, the first one is the regression, right? Previously we mentioned, there seems like those six data points, they are aligned like on a certain line, right? So we are trying to see, can we find out that line? Can we write an equation for that line, right? So, I mean, now we know there's a formula we can apply to find out uh, what's the line, equation for this line, everybody? In high school, right? You probably heard about the equation of the line here. Uh, y is equal to a plus bx. What do we call for this a? Intercept. B, slope, right? If we know a, we know b, then we know this line, right? So a, b, they have the formula to do the calculation here. Again, this calculation here is way more complex. We don't require that. Uh, the computer can easily handle that, okay? So I don't require you to calculate A and B, okay? So based on the calculation, we got uh, A is equal to 0.396, B is equal to 0.106. So in other words, this equation uh, you, is, is, it should be given if there is any question related with that. This question should be given, right? So now we know the equation Y hat is equal to a plus bx, right? And the question is, why we are, I mean, spending so much energy, time in, try to calculate that equation, find out what's A, what's B, any application for that, right? Everybody, once you know this line, one of the immediate application is, we can use this line to forecast, right? Now there is another company, say, that a company has 20,000 cars. Has 20,000 cars, this example here, right? So X is equal to 20. So that 20 is, is not one of those six data points, right? It's someone say, like somewhere here, for example, okay? Right, 20, X equal to 20,000 cars, right? Then you plug into that equation, you find out what's the corresponding Y, right? That's your forecast. In other words, that's another company with 20,000 cars. What's the corresponding revenue we are expecting for that, right? So that's what we call forecast prediction, right? Uh, so that's the, the magic. Uh, you see uh, a lot of time we say, uh, what's the probability of running tomorrow, right? Where is that probability coming from? They are all coming from this kind of a regression. So they plug into the equation, right? Based on the historical uh, input, right? Assume tomorrow, uh, what's the humanity um, rate? What's the, uh, the wind speed, right? Those are potential input you can put over there as an assumption and then plug into that equation to calculate what's the probability of running tomorrow, right? Same as here. 
So after you proc the company with 20,000 cars, you find out the corresponding revenue is what? 2.516 billion. That's the, uh, the revenue for that company. Uh, now, that's what we, uh, the application here. Uh, you can see that in the homework, we have a few homework questions. Like given the equation, you have a new X. Can you help find out why, right? I mean, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's like high school uh, or even middle school, elementary school equation, okay? Uh, I have some loads here. Um, this coefficient of B, right? This B here, we have A plus BX. This B, we call this slope, right? We also have another name for that. We call that marginal change. Uh, what does that mean? That means if you have one unit change of X, what's the corresponding change of Y? So what does that mean? If you have one unit change of X, means if you have 1,000 more cars, because we are talking about units in 1,000, right? So if you give me 1,000 more cars, what's the corresponding revenue? You are expecting more. So it will be 0 0.106 billion dollars more so that's the, the the understanding of this marginal change is that clear everybody the marginal change all right so that's the um for this piece here so we can calculate the equation right uh for the for the line right now let's going back remember we have this concept uh, concept here right coefficient of determination everybody this is a very statistically useful concept. How do we understand that, right? So um, this calculation part is actually pretty straightforward. Coefficient of determination is what? Is R square. Something square. What's that something? R. Remember, R is the correlation coefficient, right? So if R is equal to 0.8, then R squared is a six, uh, 0.8 multiplied by 0.8, that's 64%. So how do we understand this 64%, everybody? The co coefficient of determination, 64% for this example here, right? Is to measure how good, how good it is, right? For the, like those data points, are they close to this line or not? To get an overall measure, how, how good for this line to fit, right? So if in that case, R is equal to 0.8, that means R squared is 64%. That means what? That means we can say 64% of data points, they are on this line. Intuitively, you can understand that way. More fancy way to explain that is, there are 64 data points can be explained by that regression line. Everybody, that's the fancy way, right? 64% of data points can be explained by that regression line. Question, if I'm asking, what's the percentage, percentage of data points not explained or unexplained by that regression line? What will it be? It will be one minus that 64%, which is 36%. That's right, Kenneth, you are right, yep. So, um, that's the, um, this concept here, coefficient of determination. Uh, is to measure how good, how good for this line. So ideally, we want to get what? 100%, right? In other words, we want to have, we want to cover every single data point on this line. Right, uh, in, re in reality, that we can never get 100%, right? So if you are able to get 100%, that means either the data is a fake data or something wrong in the calculation or, or the, someone is lying, that's not true, right? We never expect 100%, right? Usually, if it's beyond 90%, 95%, that's very good, okay? As the, uh, this uh, concept, coefficient of determination. 
Now, we finished the uh, regression line here. We, uh, one more piece here is, not only we can tell, right? Now, if you have a new company, right? With 20,000 cars, right? I can tell you what's the expected value for that company, right? I plug in that number into the equation. I find out this dot here, the black dot here, right? Not only that, remember, we have started the confidence interval, right? We can also provide the confidence interval for that. So if you have another company with 20,000 cars, we can provide you the confidence interval, like 95% of the time, what's the revenue we are following, right? So you will see that it's a formula. There's a formula to calculate that, everybody. This beautiful formula here, right? You probably don't want to touch that, right? Uh, so it's, uh, it's complex, right? Uh, so we know there's a way to calculate. That's good enough, okay? Uh, we don't require the calculation here, okay? So like at the end, we got this 95% of confidence interval. That's good enough. We don't require the calculation. We know there's a way we can calculate the confidence interval. That's good enough. Okay, we don't require the calculation in itself. Now the uh, exercise here, uh, we have uh, these five examples here. Um, if you have some time available, like just out of curiosity, you can try that uh, to understand better. Uh, can we calculate that, right? Uh, um, I would say the more focus, uh, if you want to care about the final, right? Let's try to study the homework coming from those uh, sections. The homework will be uh, very, very important. Remember, uh, that will be the focus. Okay, so that's for our chapter 10 in terms of study the correlation and the regression for the, um, we call this cause and effect uh, study.